Well, in this discussion in chapter on functions, we want to take a second and talk about linear functions. You have been doing linear equations for a long time in your math, um, and so we're going to take a second and talk about some things that maybe you kind of forgot about. First of all, let me focus you in on this picture that we have right here. So this is what's called a scatter plot. All of these dots on this graph are um, dots representing data for the percentage of adult females who are literate and under five mortality. Okay, so this is a relationship here between the literate females and under five mortality. So each one of these dots is actual data that has been plotted here. This is called a scatter plot because you see all of these dots and they're scattered along this picture. Now the blue line that you see running through all of this data is called a regression line and it is what we would consider the line of best fit. So it is a line that is used to model or predict information about the data that we are looking at. Okay, so we can actually calculate that line. Now because my line is linear here, that would imply that it obviously has a slope because you can see it sloped down. So the slope is important for us when we're looking at data like this because the slope talks about the rate of change in which um, something is happening with my data. Okay, so putting all of that together, although we have data here that's representing real world uh, information, we can use lines and their slope to gain information and interpret information about our real world stuff. So, before we talk about scatter plots, we want to remember some th certain things about slope. So, slope is defined as the change in y's over the change in x's. Now, when we plot slope, remember that that's going to be the y the rise over the run. So we rise in the y direction and we run in the x direction. We have a vertical change, of course, in the y direction and we have a horizontal change in the x direction. So mathematically, we have the formula that you see right here. So slope is defined as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 where these y's, the y2 and the y1, come from the y coordinate of these two points that you see over here on this line. So if I wanted to calculate the slope of this line, I would take the change in their y values, divide it by the change in their x values, and I come up with a number. Just remember that uh, you don't want the x values to end up being zero down here because that gives us an undefined slope. So this is the slope for the, uh, the formula for slope. Now when we talk about slope, we have four possible so, um, scenarios for slope. We have a positive slope here, so if I calculated my slope out and it is a positive number, it would imply that I have a line that is going to rise from the left to the right. So this is a picture of a positive slope. And when I look at a graph, whether I know what the actual calculation for the slope is, if my line looks like this, rising from the left to the right, it would imply that it is a positive slope. Conversely, we have this one over here, which is a negative slope. So if I'm falling from the left to the right, then this would be a negative value. My slope would be negative in that case. We also can have two special types of slope here. I have the zero slope. And if you notice, remember I said that slope is about a rate of change. If I have a zero slope here, there is no change that is occurring. This is going to be constant. So if I have a ball that's traveling along this line, it is ne not going to go up or down. It's going to move at the same rate. And so that means that this would be a constant uh, slope or a slope of zero. And then finally, this is the picture of what happens when our x denominator becomes zero. The slope of this line, it's a vertical line and we say that the slope of this vertical line is undefined. And that's because when we calculated the slope, we ended up with zero in the denominator. If that's the case, this is a, it's going to give us a vertical line like you see here. 
So we have these four possibilities for the slope of a line. Next, we want to talk about some equations that you want to make sure that you have written down and you can get to them handy and you start to remember what they are. All of these equations are for lines. The first equation that we can look at here is called the point-slope formula. And to me, the point-slope formula is, don't make it any harder than it is. If you see here in the equation, I have y1 and y2. Those two things are a point, and a point is represented by its x value and its y value. And then that follows with this value here, which is the slope, because we define the slope as m. So whenever you see an equation that has uh, a y1 and x1 along with an m, you're looking at the point-slope formula. Now, just to be clear, this y that does not have a subscript on it and this x that does not have a subscript on it, those are the variables in the equation. These are the things that are changing. When we plug into and use the point-slope formula, we're plugging into all of these things that I highlighted. Now, the next equation of lines that is kind of like what I call the holy grail of all, equa of all linear equations, that's called the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And if you remember having to graph anything on your graphing calculator, you always had to put it in this form for us to be able to look at it. To me, it's the holy grail of all of the linear equations because it gives me quite a bit of information at a glance. Because I can immediately identify the slope of the, of the function, I know perhaps um, the rate of change if I wanted to look at it. And the other thing that is um, clearly indicated in this form, in the slope-intercept form, is the y-intercept. That's what this b stands for. This is where it's crossing the y-axis. And that gives me some other information about the material that I'm looking at when it's in this form. Now, because we're talking about function notation in this particular chapter, we can also represent the um, slope-intercept form in function form where we replace y with just f of x. You already saw that we can have a horizontal and vertical lines from up above when we were talking about slope. The equation for all horizontal lines is y equals b. In other words, this value b is where I am crossing the y-axis at. So if, for example, I have a line that is crossing here at, I don't know, 3, the equation of that horizontal line is y equals 3. The same concept occurs when we talk about vertical lines. So all vertical lines are written in the form x equals a number. So this time, let's say I have a vertical line that is going to pass through the point uh, negative, well, we won't use 3. Let's use um, negative 2 then the equation of this vertical line is x is equal to negative 2. So <clears throat> it's a single letter, and it's representing uh, the, it kind of is easy to locate what the equation is because it's usually where, well, it's where. It crosses the either the x-axis or the y-axis. Now the last form of the equation that you see here is called the general form. So anytime I have some constant a or some constant times x, plus by plus c equals 0, notice that the variable x is raised to the first power. And then I have the, uh, the variable y here. So this is indicating that I have um, a line, because I would have both the x and the y um, values represented from my, from my um, coordinate plane, because I have an x and a y axis here. So those things are represented in the equation. And um, this is just the general form of a linear equation. So the next thing that we're going to look at together is going to be modeling from these equations.